Almost the weekend. That means Mark Zinno and I have a couple top 25 matchup looks for you here on the program today. We've also conspired for a best bet in the NBA, a game we both like. A very focused and locked in Mark Zinno, as you can see, who is about to drop some knowledge on an interesting matchup that we've got for Saturday. Minnesota and Illinois. Mark, you know, I always want to talk about whenever we have an unranked team favored at home over a top 25 opponent. Well, this is the very rare instance of an unranked road team laying points to a top 25 opponent. How are you betting Minnesota, Illinois? Yeah, I mean, this kind of just feels like it's too much to pass up here with the Illini. And just doing some, some sort of comparative analysis here when you look at Minnesota as a team. Now, for you guys who know who bought my $5 play last week, we cashed on Minnesota. We laid the four and a half or the four, uh, and they easily won over Maryland at home, which was a nice winner for us. But I find it hard to believe right now that Minnesota deserves to be a favorite on the road against the ranked team. I mean, again, some comparative analysis here. Just let's see if this makes sense to you. Minnesota was a two and a half point home dog to Iowa, and they lose that game 31 to 14. They w- were on the road against Michigan, where they were a nine, a 10 and a half point dog. They hung in there tight. They still lose the game, but cover the number. Then they go out on the road. And by the way, this is just their third road game of the year, which also kind of helps the case for Illinois. But then they go out on the road against UCLA, who is one of the worst teams in the Big Ten and one of the bottom feeder teams in the country. And they're only laying three and a half on the road to UCLA. They barely cover that game, winning by mm-hmm. four. And I told you last week, the four point spread they covered. So you, you want me to lay two points on the road right now to what is statistically the ninth ranked defense in the country? Nah, no way. I mean, look, I know Minnesota's been playing well. Again, we backed them last week, guys, right? So I'm well aware Max Brosmer is having a very good year. Uh, he's played very well for Minnesota. He's taking care of the football. You know, you talk about 12 touchdowns and four interceptions. He's done a really good job. But this Illini defense at home, this is just too much here. Uh, it's way too much. I, I know Minnesota needs a win to become bowl eligible and everything, but I, I, this is a bad spot for the Gophers, especially after a huge offensive output against a soft Maryland defense. They're going to walk right into the Illini in the teeth of that defense. And I believe they get shut down. I think the line I take this one. I, I would take the two points, but I'll sprinkle the money line for a goof just as well. But I'll back the Illini here as a home dog. Give credit where credit is due here. Chris Felica tweeted that since 2021, there have been six instances of an unranked team being favored on the road. That's more than I would have thought. Uh, five of those six home dogs won the game outright. Lone loser was by a touchdown. So uh, history shining. Smiling, if you will, on Mark Zinno with that play on Illinois plus the points. Hit that thumbs up if you agree with Mark. I am going to talk about Texas A&M and South Carolina. This is another game where we've got a short home dog, although uh, more uh, traditional role that the ranked team is favored here. Uh, despite their four and three straight up record, Mark, I think the Gamecocks uh, are a top 20 team in the country. That's how I have them power rated. And I think they're a great situational play this week in Columbia against an AM team coming off a big win over LSU. The Aggies needed the big second half. And the court, you know, they're still playing flip flop. Wegman, I don't know why they still play him, but the, the, the unsettled quarterback situation is what is giving me some pause with the Aggies here. Meanwhile, South Carolina off a bye. They have an ATS record at home when facing top 10 opponents of 12, 5, and 1 against the number, which includes seven outright wins. Two of South Carolina's three losses this year, Mark, were to Alabama and LSU by a total of five points. I know I said at the start of the year, AM to make the college football playoff was a great bet, but this, they've hardly been dominant. The unsettled quarterback situation, like I said, does give me some pause, and I think this is their toughest matchup since the season opening loss to Notre Dame, so give me the points with South Kakalaki in that one. Any did thoughts you just there? Say South you... Kakalaki? I did. I'm, I, I, you know, it was. I, I it was <laughs> just trying to. Like, I'd like. I'd like to rewind ten seconds ago, and never have you say that phrase again. Okay, oh just you know, something I was trying on. I do. I, I do. Worst case scenario it would upset you a lot. I mean. That landed like a fart in church. Like, don't don't do that. Just just say the game, Cox. Right? Like, go just say South Carolina. 
You know, go there Pops. was so much. How about that? There you go. There was so much more material for you to work with there than South Kakalaki. First of all, it's Kakalaka, not Kakalaki. Oh. You lackey. I'm, okay. I'm not from the South. It's, I don't know that. I, I, well, I clearly, you're also not from the hood, <laughs> bro. Okay. So just know your limitations here and stay within those. You see that little box? See that little box that you're in right there? Just stay right yeah. in there. Just don't, okay. just don't go okay. outside of that. Okay. That's your home. That's where you live. Right there. <laughs> go to your home. <laughs> uh, all right, let's try that again. Dancing. Dear Lord. Okay, yeah, try South it again Carol- for the audience. South Carolina plus three yeah. versus Texas A&M. That is Very my half good. of the double play. Smash that like button if you agree. Comment down below with what you're betting on Saturday. We would like to yes. uh, see that. We always enjoy that. Uh, you Comment know, down below worth- if you think Ryan Power should never say the word South Kakalaki again. Comment down below if you think dropping the ball before you cross the goal line for a touchdown is stupid. And I think everyone should comment that. I don't care that I won that bet last night. Look, in these trying times of 2024, okay, there's a lot of people do things. They say things I disagree with, okay? That's just a fact of life. But I try in my heart and soul often, Mark Sino, to say, you know what? I don't agree with what this person's saying or doing, but I can see why they might say or do that. I am bringing this up, okay, not to deliver some great speech of unity, but to say, I don't think there's anything more indefensible in Western society than dropping the football before you cross the end zone for a touchdown. There's no purpose to it. Do you think you're cool? No. like Because you're not cool. No, you're definitely not cool. Not cool. Not cool at all. Um, you know what the other part of it is too is that uh it's a whole lot of uh like uh just there's no reason like just no, like, hand the ball to the official. Hand you the can't ball even to make the a reason to do it. No, like, it's just, indefensible. I mean, one of my favorite all time players in the NFL was always Barry Sanders, and for my money, the greatest running back that ever lived. And I just always love the fact and dude, who doesn't love a good spike, right? Who doesn't love a good mm-hmm. love a good dance? I'm all, I'm there for all of it, but I just always appreciate it. He just walked to the official, handed him the ball because you want to know why? It's that old adage, act like you've been there before. And Barry Sanders was there before a lot. And he said, here you go, Mr. Official. I'm going to do this again in about 20 minutes. Here, you take this one. I'll have another one for you in about 20 minutes. So you take the ball. And that was the end of it. Yeah. I guess in the Jets defense, it's not often that they get to the end zone. So maybe that's why well, we saw there's, that. There's that. Th- thankfully, thankfully, if, you, if you're wondering... What the hell we're talking about, by the way. I'm, you'll see the highlight within, I'm sure, the next couple hours, everybody, of the Jets-Texans game last night. Or should I say the low light? Uh, at least, luckily for me, the Jets did wind up winning that game. Uh, we talked about that. Devontae Adams, anytime touchdown, was a winner yesterday on the show. Uh, C.J. Stroud oh, finished uh, half of reception under his total, I mean, which was brutal. A half of an attempt, you mean? I mean, that was, yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was, uh, that was, uh, we got kicked in the nuts last night. I mean, that's we we got the the essential. That's why sports betting is so infuriating. Um, and the problem is, is that CJ Stroud like took off and ran like four or five times. Like mm-hmm. I just needed him to throw one of those away instead of running. And uh, and we go over that number, and, and it and it didn't happen. However, I will say this much: he ended up on thirty-one. You know, uh, interestingly enough. There were alternate numbers out there, and because it's funny, when I looked DraftKings yesterday, and when I put out the free play officially, I know sometimes we do the show, and I don't get around to putting out the actual free play. The free play I gave out last night was thirty and a half, so it went over. So maybe some of you got lucky and got a better number at thirty and a half than thirty one and a half, and and you ended up cashing a ticket. I hope that's the case. And then, speaking of kicking the teeth, Mark Tulane ending on thirty (laughs) four. We move on. Let's move on to Friday. That was yesterday. Let's move on to today. Uh, you and I, our best bet segment. Or would you like to talk about your weekend before we do the best bet first? Or would you like to do the best bet? Your choice. I mean, uh, I, I will. I, I make mine short and easy. Uh, look, I'll have a play in college tonight. Um, so uh, go get it at wt.buzz slash mz. Uh, if you bought my $2, uh, my $5 Tuesday play, that's a college play. And then I'm probably going to add two to three more for the weekend. Uh, I'm just waiting for some more numbers to settle as we get. BP and I have found out as we've gotten deeper into the college football season, some of the number volatility comes in later in the week. And I just kind of want to make sure what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. And and uh, 
that nothing comes out of the blue here. So uh, we'll, we'll get to a decent-sized college card. Still an 11-4 college run for me. That's all I'm going to talk about my record, wt.buzz slash mz. Within the next still 12 hours, my complete NFL and college card will be available right there, wt.buzz slash bp. I'm going to have four college football plays for Saturday, four NFL plays for Sunday. Uh, the Jets was a nice start to the weekend. Hopefully we can keep it going and have a big bounce back after last weekend's uh, disappointment. So uh, head on over, wt.buzz slash BP. It'll only be $29 for the complete college card, $29 for the complete NFL card. What a deal that is. All right, show best bet. Uh, what a deal it would be if you have bet against the Atlanta Hawks and taken the over in all of their games this year. Yeah. If you would have done those two things on all five of their games, you would be 10-0 with your wagers. Uh, That's pretty good. But we... We, always afraid to uh, walk against traffic, I suppose, Mark. We're betting the Atlanta Hawks tonight, the 0-5 ATS Atlanta Hawks, uh, as they host Sacramento. You and I were just flabbergasted by this line. We were looking up if, you know, it, it had Trey Young been kidnapped? Uh, six and a half is six and a half is too much for Atlanta to be getting at home against Sacramento, and that's our best bet. Talk to us. Yeah, I mean, that's it's kind of really what it boils down to. I mean, also, like, is Sacramento markedly better than Atlanta? They're better, but I don't know if they're markedly better enough where the Hawks should be getting six points at home um, against a team that, you know, frankly, isn't as high scoring as they used to be. Look, now I know the Hawks defense is really bad, but the Hawks are also coming off a sweep of a home and home uh, at the hands of the Washington Wizards, who are, you know, again, going to be one of Not the worst good. teams in the game. Now, look, and look, I mean, if Sacramento's laying six and a half against the Hornets, the Spurs, the Wizards, or the Pistons, I'd be like, okay, that I understand. The Hawks aren't great, but still, they're, they're a decent home team, um, and, and the, the, the high-scoring nature of this brings in a little volatility to lace that, that kind of number. Um, you know, the Hawks, it's crazy. The Hawks had like a seven-point lead at halftime against the Wizards in their last game and got outscored by like 20. In the second half, they gave up 76 points in the second half. I think they're outscored by 21, 76 to 55, uh, and ended up losing that game by 13. I think they bounced back tonight at home against State Farm Arena, where, you know, if you look at this year, they lost to Washington by two, and then they won by five, and they won by four. They're a much better home team than they are on the road. So we'll take the six and a half points here with the Hawks for our best bet tonight. Love it. They're fine people in Atlanta, Georgia. Very fine people. No, not- All right. <laughs> The Hawks as a home underdog, your NBA best bet. Just to recap, we gave you a couple look aheads for Saturday. Mark taking the points with Illinois against Minnesota. I'm taking the points with South Carolina against Texas A&M. If you have not already smashed that like button, you're disappointing us. You need to do that right now. You also need to yeah. make sure you subscribe to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. It's the weekend, buddy. I know. It's the weekend. It is. I'm sure I'll be rage texting you later. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure I'm not talking to you again, Yeah. <laughs>